Hello Wobblies! Welcome to Wobbly Otter Outdoors. I'm Chris and this video is for those who are interested in getting an off-road trailer rig. We're taking a look at two different types of off-road rigs. One that you sleep inside of and one that has a rooftop tent to see how they compare on 10 different points. So these are our two representative off-road rigs. A 2019 Escapade Backcountry and a 2015 Morris Mule Trailer with a Smittybilt rooftop tent. Seasons of use. This one can depend a lot on the part of the country that you live in, as well as what conditions you're comfortable in. Sometimes you may need an air conditioner, sometimes you may need a heater. Those are things to consider when you're looking at a rig. Trailers that have a cabin you can sleep in offer the benefit of hard sides and a hard roof. During strong winds, that means it will be much quieter and you'll have better protection. Some off-road campers like this one also offer air conditioning. We live in Texas. Pretty much any time we want to go somewhere, if we go in the summer, we're going to have 100 plus degree Fahrenheit temperatures during the day. In July and August, it's just a given. So having an air conditioner for us greatly increases the seasons we can use a camper. During times of rain and trailers with a cabin, the windows often don't have a covering, so if the wind's blowing pretty hard, it's likely to also rain inside. Of course, if you happen to have an awning open, that will keep the rain from going inside, which is great for a nice, pleasant rain, but during a thunderstorm, you could end up tearing up your awning. An additional benefit of trailers like this is often they already come wired for electricity or you can wire them yourselves. This allows you to use any number of heaters. A nice thing about the design of the Max Fan is that it has the covering that protects it during rain. If there's one thing we've learned about using a rooftop tent during a windstorm or a rainstorm with high winds, it's going to be loud in the tent. You'll probably have the rain fly on to be an additional protection against rain for the tent. And this puppy is going to flap and move and slap. It's going to hit the sides of the tent. The tent's going to hit the sides of the inside support poles and it is going to be loud. That said, there's nothing better than going to sleep in a tent when there's a light rain. You cannot beat that sound. Okay, maybe if you're by a babbling brook, too. A very cool thing about a rooftop tent is the ones that have these awnings that come out over the windows. This lets you have the windows open so you get plenty of ventilation even if there is rain and you can still see out. It's wonderful. Love this. Off-road capability. What kind of places are you gonna go? What kind of road conditions or path conditions are there? Do you even need an off-road capable vehicle? And while the trailer just follows, so you may not need all-terrain tires for a lot of places you go, if you ever plan on going to places that are off the beaten path and help is far away, and there's a chance that you could come into conditions that could damage a tire, it's good to have an all-terrain or off-road tire. For off-road capability, there's a few things to address. One is ground clearance, another is the exit angle, another thing is suspension, and in some cases, even the width of the trailer. This can vary widely. So I'll give you the specs on these two trailers to give you an idea for comparison. This backcountry has a ground clearance of between 16 and 17 inches. A big plus of this camper is it comes with a Timberon axleless suspension. This particular one is a 3,500 pounds. When in tow, the trailer tracks just outside the tracks of our tow vehicle. The ground clearance of George is 19 to 20 inches, and from the bottom of his axle to the ground is 16 inches. Other things that benefit George for his off-road capability are he's narrow. He's a little narrow trailer. A challenge for any off-road trailer is going to be a very tight turn. When you're looking at a trailer for off-road capabilities, shorter is usually better. The closer that you can get the lowest point of the back of the trailer to the axle, the less likely it is to drag. The exit angle, or the angle of departure, is the angle between the ground and a line running from the rear tire to the lowest trailer part that's behind it. 
Some off-road trailers are designed so that their back bottom corner is essentially chopped off. This further improves their exit angle. For us, this trailer has an adequate clearance. The only Achilles heel is that it's a little bit longer and it will be prone to drag in certain conditions. Ease of towing. When you're looking at a trailer, you'll need to consider things like its weight, how much your tow vehicle can pull, and visibility. How well can you see around the trailer or through the trailer? There's a variety of suspensions that come on off-road trailers. The Morse Mule has a Dexter axle. Even when it's loaded, George is half the weight of Poe. And if ever a little trailer could express glee, it's George. This little bounce on rough roads has become quite an endearing feature for us. And we've had him in tow in winds of 50 to 70 miles an hour. When those winds are crosswinds, it moves little George around. Probably not so much for the trailer itself, but because of having the rooftop tent on top. Even though it's not very tall, it seems to catch air. Poe pulls like a dream. We've tried to figure out exactly why, and here are some of our thoughts. One is the timber and axle of suspension. It gives it a very nice cushion ride and keeps it in touch with the road surface. Also the weight. He's not particularly heavy, but he's not all that light either. So it seems to be a good combination between trailer size, weight, and the suspension. And another thing may be its height and its aerodynamics. For whatever reason, the front of the camper does not catch a lot of wind. The wind seems to slip right around it beautifully. As important as the adventures are that you're going to take in your trailer, also important is a place that you can store your trailer when it's not in use. Some trailers need or should be covered for storage, and others that may not be as big of an issue. Because of their small size, off-road trailers will often fit into a standard garage. In general, the thing to watch for most is the height. To put a rooftop tent or any other gear on top of a trailer, of course it's going to make it taller, and it may be harder to get it through a standard garage door. Comfort and size of the sleeping area are important, and you want to be sure there's plenty of room for the family to sleep, as well as if you're taking a pup along with you, and you may have additional gear that you want to be in the sleeping area with you too. For many, having a camper that you can stand up in is very important. Since we're talking about a trailer rig with a rooftop tent, we're going to be addressing the rooftop tent specifically with this. Most rooftop tents come with a mattress that's anywhere from 2 to 3 inches thick. You can always purchase an aftermarket mattress to put inside of it. You just need to be sure that it'll fold up without any trouble inside the tent. In the bottom of this rooftop tent, the floor dimension is 94 inches long by 56 inches wide. And in the center, with a two inch mattress, to the highest point is 44 inches. Trailers with a sleeping cabin are for the most part large enough to hold a queen size mattress. And because the bed is essentially always made, as opposed to folding up like a rooftop tent, you can have any mattress in there that you want. We chose to use a folding mattress. This particular sleeping cabin is 84 inches long and 64 inches wide. A benefit of this design over some rooftop tents is the ends don't taper down very much. It only tapers down ever so slightly in the front. From the top of the mattress to the ceiling at its highest points is 40 inches. A couple more things to consider are price and durability. Price comes down to your budget and the features that you want. For durability, we can only really speak to the Morris Mule trailer because we haven't had the escapade for that long. The Morris Mule is built like a tank. It's all metal. We've traveled with it over 20,000 miles and nothing is broken. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And in the video description, we'll put links to lots of the gear that we've stuck on both these trailers. Thanks for watching Wobbly Otter. We love you and hope all your tomorrows are bright. Until next time.